Hi guys and welcome back to the early bird photo news. Last week I've spent mostly editing photos and videos from my two month long road trip to far north Queensland, but I also made sure to have some time to enjoy the beautiful sunny winter weather here at the Gold Coast. I must admit that I enjoy taking photos and videos in the field much more than editing, so it always becomes a bit of a chore, but that's why I pay a lot of attention to my workflow and try to have it as effective as possible so I don't spend too much time behind the computer. So whenever I have a lot of images, I open them up in Fast on Image Viewer, select the ones I want to keep and delete the rest. From there, I run the files to DX or Pure Raw to get rid of the noise, and you can do that in a big batch, so you can start the files and come back like an hour later and you have processed maybe 50 images if you wanna do that many. And from there, I open up the denoised raw file in either Camera Raw or Lightroom, select the Pro Set that I want to use from the Profile section to get my raw files with just one click to a great starting point. From there, I make a few more tweaks and open up the file in Photoshop, where I then run my workflow that I teach you step by step in my masterclass to get to a great final result quickly. That allows me to get to a relatively large amount of images quickly without sacrificing image quality. Of course, not all images are equal and there are some that are easier to edit and then there are some that need a little bit more attention. For instance, there might be a distracting branch going across the bird or in the background. That's something that I would remove. And I think it's worthwhile spending that little bit of extra time to remove these things because then we get the images that we envision in the field and the best results we can possibly get. I know that some people don't like image editing at all. They think it's an unnecessary chore. It's faking your images or that you shouldn't really touch the images and just keep them just straight out of camera. But I would disagree. I actually think we owe it to the raw files to edit them up to the best possible way we can. We spend so much time in the field, so much energy in the field. So why wouldn't we learn the editing process to get the absolute most out of our images and make them look absolutely amazing. And if you need help with that, make sure to check out my Pro Sets and Masterclass down there in the description where I teach you exactly how to make your own images stand out. But now, please let me know in the comments, what do you think about image editing? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you think you should be editing your images or just leave them alone completely? Let me know. This week, I've actually heard some very interesting whispers from a few people that I sometimes talk to that usually know about new cameras fairly early on. And a few of them suggested that there will be a new full frame mirrorless Canon camera still this year, like an R6 II, an R6 successor or camera in that sort of similar range. And I'm not talking about that new vlogging camera that we know will come out towards the end of this year. That will be an APS-C camera and likely won't have an EVF for instance. So not that camera at all. What I'm talking about is a full frame mirrorless camera in the 20 to 30, likely mid 20 megapixel range with some fantastic video specs. At first I thought that doesn't really make sense. Why would there already be a successor to the R6 or a very similar camera to the R6? But then I spoke to a few more people and a few of them suggested that the sales for the R6 at the moment have actually dropped because we now have the R7 and the R10 and we also have the R5 coming down in price a little bit. And after all, one of the main reasons to buy an R6 has always been the price point. But now with more cheaper mirrorless cameras available, some of that advantage has faded away. And especially as a video camera, the R6 has some limitations like that 2959 recording limit and it doesn't have any modes that don't overheat. So updating that camera in the light of declining sales might actually make sense. And you could have an R6 II that has the R7, R3 autofocus systems and much better video features like oversampled 4K, maybe 6K, and also like a 240 frames per second mode, for instance. I must admit that would be quite an attractive camera, especially if it stays in that sort of same price point. It does seem like this update would be more focused on video shooters and video specs rather than adding a lot more for photographers other than maybe the autofocus system and a slightly increased megapixel count. I personally think it wouldn't be more than 24 knowing that the R3 is 24 megapixels. Are you guys interested in a camera like this in an updated R6 and a more video centric R6 or is that not for you at all? Make sure to let me know in the comments. All of this comes on the back of an interview I was reading where Canon has said that they think the market for camera sales has kind of bottomed out. For years, it was in strong decline because 
mobile phone cameras just took a lot of market share away, especially from the lower end of the camera market. But now Canon is positive that the market will actually pick up again and that there will be some nice growth segment, especially in that sort of semi-pro and professional sector. So the more higher end and higher price cameras and lenses. There is one area all the companies definitely seem to focus on and that's the vlogging camera segment because it seems to be the perfect transition point from mobile phone to a more professional camera. Sony has the ZV-E10, Nikon has the Z30 now and Canon will very likely have something coming out later this year that will be in the mold of like an M62, a similar kind of camera. APC in a sort of 24 megapixel range with good video features like 4K 60p and some sort of newly designed flip out screen that will make it easy for vlogging. And a camera like that will likely have no EVF, but for people that are used to shooting with mobile phones, not having a viewfinder is probably not really an issue because most of them will hold the camera like that anyways. Are you interested in that sort of slightly better than mobile phone segment or not at all? <laughs> Nikon also seems to be doing well overall, having reported increased profits and revenue. After their sort of not so great entry into the mirrorless market with cameras like the Z6 and Z7. They now seem to have successfully really taken over that mirrorless market and have gotten a lot of their shooters to buy the Z9 cameras and some of their great lenses. Especially in that sort of telephoto range, Nikon has definitely been innovating and offering photographers some fantastic options. And I know when that 200 to 600 will come out eventually, even more people will want like a Z9 or future Z8 with that 200 to 600 millimeter lens because that will be a fantastic sort of walk around combo. So hopefully Nikon can produce more of these awesome cameras and lenses and also deliver them because that seems to be the Achilles heel at the moment. They're releasing a lot of great gear, but it's extremely hard to get it and they are still halting orders for more products. For instance, the SB500 flash has also been halted and you can't order it at the moment. If you can actually get the gear, it has been performing great in the field. And especially with the firmware update 2.1, the Z9 also seems to have done a big jump in autofocus performance. So overall, not an easy situation to be in with all the production issues, but I'm impressed with what Nikon has been able to do with the Z9 and especially the innovation they've shown and their willingness to innovate in that telephoto space. Again, no Sony news this week, what's new? But I read an interesting survey where people were asked what they would want to see in an A1 Mark II. One question was, would you want to have an integrated battery grip like an R3 or Z9, or do you prefer that smaller style with no battery grip? And the overwhelming majority, about 70% said that they don't want to have an integrated battery grip and they prefer the smaller layout of the camera. That surprised me a little bit, but then at the same time, I thought there's a lot of shooters that use Sony cameras with smaller, shorter lenses, landscape, vlogging, etc. And there, the battery grip doesn't really have much an advantage. Where battery grip or an integrated battery grip has a real advantage is in the telephoto range with bigger lenses and just the feel of the camera in your hand is better with an integrated battery grip. The second question was, would you want to see more than 50 megapixels in the A1 Mark II? And the overwhelming answer again was no, about 70% again. And I agree here, I think 50 megapixels, pretty much a sweet spot. It gives you great ability to crop. You can print really large, you have awesome image quality with great details, and the files are still manageable. If we push much higher into 75, 100 megapixel, Everyone has to upgrade their computers. Again, you need new memory cards. So I think at this stage, having much more than 50 megapixels doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. What would you like to see in an A1 Mark II? More than 50 megapixels, an integrated battery grip, something else? Make sure to let me know in the comments. What I personally would definitely want to see in an A1 Mark II is eye checking in video mode and much improved image stabilization. That's probably the main two things I didn't like when Sony cameras in the past. And I actually have thought about buying like an A1 and a 200 to 600 as a walk around combo, but not having the eye checking in video mode and having much worse image stabilization in video mode has been two main factors that kept me away from buying a nice hand holdable Sony combo that I can use from time to time. A few months ago, I showed you my brand new tripod, the Pro Media Gear TR344L. And now I've been using it for a few months in the field. I must say I'm very impressed with it. I love how easy the legs open and close. I love having these metal 
closing mechanism. So there's no rubber that's coming loose like on my old Gitzo tripod. With this one, it feels nice and sturdy. It opens up nice and easy and everything feels very great. And I'm also loving the lightweight of it and how far it extends in the field. I had a few situations where I was like standing on a hill and I had to extend one leg very far for my tripod to not fall over. And I know in these situations, I would have struggled a lot more with my old tripod, whereas now with the new tripod, I could just extend one leg really, really long and was able to then have a sturdy stand for my tripod, even on a small windy sort of mountain path. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with the tripod. The only few things I noticed, it seems to scratch fairly easily and the paint comes off in a few spots. But in saying that, I'm really not careful with this tripod. I usually just throw it in the car, so some sort of scuff marks are to be expected. Another piece of equipment that I bought with this tripod that I really enjoy is this really right stuff cradle clamp. It makes it so much easier to put my lens on the tripod and take it off. Can't believe I used this old Wimberley screw for so long that was so hard to open and close. Now, just one flick with the finger and I can take my lens on or off. So that's so much better. And I'm happy with the new tripod and also this cradle clamp that makes it so much easier to work in the field. And on that note, I think it's time to wrap up the early bird photo news for this week. I'm going to do more image editing, more video editing. My next video is coming out probably Friday or Sunday. Some awesome in the field video, looking at a few questions, showing you how to shoot in very dark conditions, handheld. So stay tuned for that. And also make sure to give me a thumbs up for this video. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments and subscribe to my channel over there and I will see you in the next video very soon. Bye guys.